Hi, how are you? Uh, time again for Talking Small Press Comics with Steve Keeter and I'm Lana Justin. Hello. So we're back again. Our schedule's a little uh, not consistent, but we try. <laughs> anyway, are, what do Justin. we got here? Let's see what we got this morning. I got Kleenex. My allergies are killing me today. I'm sorry, and, uh, folks. Snotty nose. So those snotty are good nose. Things. And you get to see this for the duration of the video. I can promise you this. I, I can't want to let you down. Yeah. <laughs> going to be good. <laughs> so, first up, oh. let me see if I can get that in the light. First up is hologram. Uh, counting the days. Hologram. Hologram, hologram, hologram. <laughs> counting the days. What part of the country you're from. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, uh -huh. And Counting the Days, this is issue number three of Counting the Days, a mini by mm -hmm. Tom Felrath. And this one does have a price, 50 cents. Yeah. It's actually, it's actually the part three of a 12-part series that eventually is going to be put all together into one book. Yeah. So you can get yeah. a jump on it, get an idea of what's going on if you, if you want to. Uh, the art here is by... Uh, Hen uh, William Henry Cadell, if I pronounce that right. Little sample of yeah, that, the that looks right to me, Cadell. So this guy, yeah, this guy is stuck. He's a hologram or a yeah. hologram, but he can't. Mm -hmm. He's like a ghost. He's like a ghost just wandering around, and uh, he can walk through walls and everything else. And uh, some people can see him, uh, but uh, he you wants know what's to get back to the interesting moment. about this cover. Um, if you look at the cover, if, you, if I'm looking at it in person, just looking at it, it looks like a bunch of symbols. But when you move it away, it's a face. You know what? I just noticed that for the yeah. first time. Now that I'm holding it up I to the camera. I did not notice I... that in the other issues, but I think it was there. I'm going to have to look back because that's a face. Yeah, I just... I just, yeah. I just noticed that. I mean, you know, <laughs> Pretty clever. Now that I can see it on camera, it's like there's a face there. It looks better on camera when you're looking at it. You don't quite get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't look that way. Just hold it up to the camera, and there it is. Isn't that cool? <laughs> that is cool. That is cool. That's, that's Pretty neat. Cool. That's very creative. Yeah. And here's the back of it. Yeah. Since it's uh, only eight pages, we don't want to show too much, but. Uh, you know, it's a yeah. fun little story. And he keeps counting the yeah. days uh, from, oh, let's see, from uh, September of 1988. This one goes up through this March one. of yeah. 1989. And he can tell you exactly how many days it's been between yeah. there and now. So mm -hmm. 12,073 uh, days. Well, that was December 11th. 12,073 days. Did you do that in your head? Time. That's pretty good. No, I just looked at it right oh. here. It was, it's right oh. here. <laughs> oh, not so good. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got a poignant scene where he's with like his ex-wife. I guess that's his ex-wife. Uh, I read the first two issues, but now I've forgotten. It was his ex-wife or his ex- or It's not his ex-wife. It's his wife. But she has mm -hmm. to accept the fact that he's his hologram. Mm -hmm. And even has a Christmas dinner uh, with her parents. Yeah, it's in there. It doesn't yeah. go well because yeah. he's, he's like a ghost. Yeah. They're not, they're not, they don't think that's too cool. Yeah, I think he knocked and, over the wine bottle being a ghost. Looks like it. Yeah, did he do that? Yeah. yeah, I see that. Yeah, the wine bottle's knocked over. Yeah. And he tries to kiss her. Can't yeah. tell if she really felt that or not. There's a little zap sound effect there, so mm -hmm. something happened. I, I don't know, but you know, it's sad because he just wants to get back to normal, and he's just wandering. I don't around. blame him. Like, I'd like hate being uh, half invisible. Yeah, oh. it's like a ghost. Yeah. All right, let's move on to. Let's take a look. Yeah, at I want to say one more thing. He does have these zap powers because he's like here he is here and he's zapping something. Yeah, well, Point he does have special power. You find that out in the story, yeah. Yeah, so that 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 gives him uh, contact and control, and, you know, it's a power, mm -hmm. okay? So so I was going to take next? a look at Ken Anthony II. He sent three three comic books. Let's kind yeah, of take I, a look at 
Let's these are from Megacon. Yeah, there's That's three what of them. I was going to get to, yeah. This is yeah. Galleria. And the interesting thing is, this is from 2009. Right. And what I can kind of determine out of this, it was a promo for Megacon in Florida there, uh, where you are. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it was, he was probably giving them away. It's, it's a uh, promo for upcoming comics that uh, he was going to be doing. And I don't yeah. know how relevant it is now. <laughs> It See, actually does was, have a price to this kind of two dollars yeah, and fifty cents on the tag. cover, but but he's probably giving them away. Who knows the what he did from that point, you know, till now? That I'm not sure, you know, if this is relevant. If you'd like to see what he was thinking, uh, there's all kinds of examples of uh, what was going to be coming up in here, mm -hmm. and most of it is. Uh, I would say most of it's uh, kind of artists. science fiction, manga, manga mm -hmm. kind of thing. But this illustration here is by Ken himself, Ken Anthony. Oh, cool. Yeah. It, he's a really good artist. And, uh, you know, I just saw him and uh, Tony Lorenz at the most recent Megacon. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw uh, both of those guys. And, uh, you know, they're still at it. Tony Lorenz is super prolific doing work, doing like four comics at one time for different I know. people. I know. I mean, Ken Anthony, Ken Anthony, a lot of the stuff he he, he publishes a, a sketch every single day on Facebook. There's mm, a new okay. Ken Anthony drawing. And, you know, I always look forward to it. Like, like I told him at the convention, you know, like one day he didn't, he didn't post anything. I'm like, you know, where's, where's my, where's my Ken Anthony <laughs> uh, sketch? sketch? You know, yeah. you know I, this is my addiction. I have to have this every day. Uh, so he's a really good artist, but here he's a publisher, uh, and a lot of other people others, are involved. He sent two others, uh, Predator Ways. Yeah. And he sent Saki Moonshine. And I think Saki Moonshine is from 2008, I believe. Yeah, 2008. 2008. Art by, uh, art by um, what's this guy's name? Kashim. Kashim. And uh, that's a cool cover. Colors that's by really Wade cool Webb. Uh, yeah. for, on the cover there. Is the, is the cover cool by somebody? The cover. Oh, and the it, cover what's interesting to me is he writes in the back about there being three different stories in here. But when you actually look at the pages, I cannot denote where a story ends and a story starts. Looks like it's, one story to me. Yeah, it's sketch, you know, it's it's promoting what's coming up in future issues, I believe. I believe okay, that's what, what yeah. it does, but yeah, he that's describes what it as three different stories, but I cannot I cannot find them. It, what he's talking about is three different titles. Yeah, uh, because this is Saki Moonshine. There's one called Divine Destiny that he he didn't send us, and then there's Predatory Ways, which we do have. So yeah, that's, I think that's what, that's what he's referring to. It's just the... Okay, because it looked like he was referring to the stories in here. I think these are just examples of future artwork. Yeah. I believe. It's some samurai, uh, martial arts and samurai artwork. Right. And this yeah. is, yeah, yeah like you cool. said, this is Predator Ways. Yeah. And this has a... A story using utilizing photographs too. That. Predator Ways. Yeah, this one is, and there's a lot of vampire. This is vampire, and he has a new take on Dracula. Um, in the first story, mm -hmm. this guy, well, he starts out as this bloodthirsty a guy. Uh, you know, it's it's kind of sensual. You know, he's with this lady, and yeah. uh, you know, it doesn't get pornographic. You know, but it does get suggestive. Mm -hmm. But it turns out this guy, by the fourth or fifth page, he's putting on you know street clothes and looking like just you know any old uh, you know like you know yeah. somebody walking down the streets of a big city in America, and it's Dracula, but he's <laughs> he's, he's he's had a remake. <laughs> but the problem yeah. is these are pretty old. I don't know if uh, Ken would want to sell any or. Or not, uh, they do. You know, they're nice. They have 
you know, full color covers. Yeah. Um, I see what you mean about the photographs. Yeah. They use photographs for that particular story, which yeah. is kind of a neat idea. So we had models doing this. I think they mix a little artwork with the photographs and pretty clever. Yeah. But I don't know if this that is... became a publication of Ken's later or not. Yeah. I don't know. Kablam. Kablam. Kablam, whose Kablam. headquarters, Ken Kablam, whose headquarters is right here in Orlando, oh, somewhere in yeah. downtown Orlando. I'm going to head by there and visit sometime. But That's they, a good uh, idea. I had them print a comic for me. They do great work. Yeah, they did brilliant. Where they, they did the OM number one reprint for me. Yeah. And they just did a fantastic job on it. So yeah. I mean, it makes it look better than I ever expected it to look. <laughs> So anyway, that's uh, we'll put Ken's info in the description. Uh, if you'd like to see these, you can ask him if he still has them or what he's doing now, which is more important. Yeah, he's Find doing out what, what he's sure doing exactly right now. What it is. So, mm -hmm. And then next up, Ken Leach. The great Ken Leach. <laughs> I, you know, I was, uh, I was, uh, I've been associated with him for a long time. Yeah, right. And he sort of he sort of faded away for a little while, but now he's back. And I mean he's back big. Yeah. Look at this. That's what beautiful he said. Cover. He quit for a while and then came back. And I see yeah. that with a lot of people, including myself. I quit for a while and kind of came back. I did too. So everybody so happens. Know. My problem mm. was I was very good friends with Tim Corgan, and when he passed away, I lost interest in Oh, in the uh, yeah. small press for a little while, but mm -hmm. I'm doing some he stuff a, now, so we'll see what happens. But yeah, anyway, it's a great encouragement to so many people. Mm -hmm. This is this is a neat little comic because it's all about Frankenstein. Different takes on Frankenstein. Yeah. Yeah, with the Dick Briefer. Is that a, is that Dick Briefer? He he did a Frankenstein uh, some comics back in the forties. It's either it says Dick Briefer. Yeah, it's, it's Dick it Briefer. Says. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he did Frankenstein, and, and that's what Frankenstein looked in the old comics that he did. I mean, he looked uh -huh. kind of humorous. But it was kind of like, I think, uh, as I recall, it was like a prelude to like the a forerunner of the Monsters TV series. Okay. You know, Frankenstein yeah. lived in a house with a bunch of other monsters who were kind of like family. So, you know, it, kind of, it totally inspired, I think, the Monsters. Uh, anyway, it's just cool. He's got some art by Dick Briefer. I think he has some more art by, uh, by Briefer also elsewhere in the issue. Well, this has uh, uh, got a number of artists in here, mm -hmm. and uh, they each contribute a little something, and uh, they're all based on Frankenstein. Some of this is funny, uh, you know, Frankenstein kind of joke kind of things, and it's it's really cool. If I can get my hands off the picture, but uh, very cool. Worked by uh, Batten Lash, Steve Shipley, oh, Rob Marsh, Mike Bennett, Quentin yeah. Hoover, uh, a lot of great talents, Larry Blake, uh, Ken yeah. Leach himself. And some, uh, some of the artwork, two different styles right here. Uh, two yeah. different stories, of course, but two different styles of art. I like that splash mm -hmm. panel that you're showing there. Yeah. So that that, that was a good strip. Yeah. And then... I mean, there's just some really cool stuff in here. <laughs> this is by Quentin Hoover. Look at that. Beautiful. Uh, that's some great Quentin, stuff. Quentin Hoover, his, his work is uh, really nice, nicely textured and yeah. just, just, just beautiful, the line work and everything. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just look at look at all that detail and all that. Uh, and the other thing I think is cool, Ken Ken Leach himself. I really like this kind of a look. Reminds me of some <laughs> Mad Magazine stuff. But uh, yeah, or cracked, cracked or, or Mad cracked, Magazine. Same thing. Yeah, but yep, that's same Ken thing, Leach. right? He's got work in here, of course. Uh, really cool. Uh, it, cover price is five bucks. It's worth it. And it's, it's really well worth it. And uh, let me see. I don't think, I'm not sure if it has a page count in here. I think maybe, I uh, can't quite remember how many, if he has, it, it didn't number the pages, but it might say here, 
how many pages if I could find it. <laughs> anyway, uh, I don't know. Right, thirty thirty pages, maybe something maybe. like that. I mean, it's fairly thick, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Just really cool. Just neat stuff. Yeah. If you if you're a fan of Frankenstein, this is the yeah. book to get. I, I like the table of contents page with that that Frankenstein yeah. illo there. And he talks a little bit about Boris Karloff, of course, the the best Frankenstein, in my yep. opinion. William Henry Pratt. Yeah, Boris, Boris Karloff. Karloff. Yeah, and he uh, he was the best Frankenstein, as like I say, when we were kids, he was it. <laughs> He was Frankenstein. Yeah, you know? for sure. Yeah, he was he the was best. He was definitely the best. You know, oh, the, yeah. when you, if you watch the old Frankenstein's movies, and I, you know, I have all of them on DVD. I, I love mm. to just put them in, and I'll play. Even sometimes with the sound off, just just to see how you know, I look, glance over, and well, there's Frankenstein, you know. And, yeah. Um, but um, he, unlike other people, other some people played the monster as a big dumb brute. Yeah. You know. Like Lon Chaney Jr. made when he played in Ghost of Frankenstein, he made him mute, strangely mute. He, he doesn't, mm -hmm. doesn't say anything, doesn't make any noise. He just, he just, he's mute and and um, he looks powerful. He's strong and everything. But when Karloff portrayed the monster, the monster wasn't straight faced. The monster would 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 scream or he'd howl in laughter, you know. Yeah. Or, but he had all these. He was so expressive as the Frankenstein yeah. Even monster. Even though he didn't he was, really talk, he just. <laughs> he actually did talk in Bride of Frankenstein. Oh, okay. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, he did, but he didn't. It taught, they, somewhere along the line, you know, he start, he learned how to talk a little bit. Uh, but Boris Karloff said later in interviews, he said he always thought it was a mistake because the, the, he would say like "fire bad," you know, and it was yeah. kind of like you know, talking in real simple language. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we belong dead at the end of the movie because. You know, he, he pulls a switch and blows up the castle at the end because the bride of Frankenstein. And I'm getting off track a little bit. Yeah, we're, what, we're what I want to say, the bride rejects him. Right? comics. <laughs> yeah, but well, but these are comics about Frankenstein, right. so that's that's the connection there. But Karloff was, was was brilliant in that role. Yeah, I'm a, I'm an old monster movie fan as well. So and so is Ken Leach. So. <laughs> <laughs> and here's some. Uh, these are just kind of two panel gags. Yeah. Funny. Franken cure. And again, that reminds me a little bit of Mad Magazine, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nervous Shakes, right here. Nervous Shakes, brother Professor Blaine. And then it says, uh, No more shakes. Yeah. I removed his brain. Took care of that. <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> Fix That'll that problem. In the shakes. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. Just yeah. great stuff. Some some of this is is reprinted and some of this is new, but it's all just beautiful. It's all good, and it's you know very well done. Really looks good. Yeah, highly recommend this one. Yeah. Now he also sent another uh, digest size. Uh, right. Do you have that? The Felix. The Felix yeah. files. The works yeah, of Yeah, this Louisa. is Louisa Felix, Felix who uh, apparently was uh, a friend of his and. Uh, has passed away now, but this is yeah. a big representation of her work. And she did a lot of horror based comics and he's mm -hmm. reprinted all kinds of them in here. You can kind of see a, what her work looked like. Got a story in here called Lady Meta Martian. Her stuff was cartoony, but it was creepy at the same time. Yeah, I, I, I remember Louisa. Yeah, she passed away, I don't know, probably a decade ago. It says 2013, I think, in here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. But, um, this but anyway, he's into uh, a it's... house. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, let me finish. The lady moved into a house, and uh, she bought a house, and she wondered if it's haunted. It was not haunted, but it was inhabited by a, a little Martian guy. <laughs> and uh, they had an argument because, uh, you know, she said, you know, legally she owns the house and she threw him out. But this guy breaks into the house and you can tell he's a robber by the way he's dressed with the striped oh, yeah, shirt and the mask. That's a classic robber. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> and uh, the Martian comes back and uh, saves the day, gets rid of the robber, and then she allows him to move in and they live happily ever after. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Never discount a robber, I guess. Yeah. 
<laughs> Excuse me, but just, there's those allergies. Just, you know, really great stuff. Look at that cover yeah. piece for this story. Uh, really nice. So, mm -hmm. and this is such a good artist. six bucks from Ken Leach. And again, we'll have his info down below. And this one says 48 pages. There you go. In a little digest comic, plus. 48 pages. So, uh, and this, look at that on the back, a little color. And it's actually it hand colored. It's like it's hand colored. It is hand colored. Ken, Ken sent me a note and said that he hand colored the lady. Hand colored each one. He hand colored, yeah. The lady turns green after uh, she's a vampire and she drank the mm -hmm. blood of like an, an alien. Yeah, of some. But alien. I think. I think the guy next to her is done by Ken Leach. Look, look yeah, at the absolutely. guy next to her. That's yeah. Ken Leach. <laughs> yeah, that's Ken. That's Ken's style for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's that's a. This is really cool. Really cool. Nice stuff. Yeah. And then he sent a sheet on kind of uh, upcoming things. Oh, I didn't get that. Oh, you didn't? Okay. Uh, no, but show it anyway, because I want to see it. I am. It looks uh, good. <laughs> he talks about the tales uh, from the morgue, the Frankenstein special. And then uh, he's got, he says, I'll just read this. I have a great old Tim Corrigan after King Kong story, along with some Larry Blake material as a starting point. Yep, I want to try a Kong anthology. And you can see it down here okay. in blue. King Kong. More King Kong. So oh, it's yeah. something he's working on. Uh, if you're a cartoonist, you might want to contact him and see if you want to submit something uh, for that upcoming uh, publication. Yeah, I've been trying to get him to re to join the UFO. He wasn't in the UFO before. He was in Pizzazz, mm -hmm. the old Pizzazz yeah. co-op that was started by Steve Shipley, you know, several decades ago. And I was uh -huh. a member. I was the chairman for a little while, but uh, we were both in that group. Uh, Louisa Felix was in that group, I believe. Oh. Um, but uh, yeah, that group uh, eventually it faded away. All the other small press co-ops uh, eventually faded away, and the UFO, which was the BPP, and started it all as far as the co-op thing. Uh, and small press is the only one that's left. Hmm. So yeah, yeah. And I'm still chairman of that group. And uh, you know, if anybody out there is publishing, you're interested in joining the group, you get free comics free zines from all the members of the group if you're a member so contact hey, me if you're interested in that and i'll send you the the info and i'm just going to show the uh, newsletter real quick he's got a little print from tim corrigan 1993 uh, after king kong which i think gave him the idea to uh, to do this and that's it right there and you can recognize if you Which know one King is it? Corrigan's work, you can recognize it right there. Is it the one in the middle or is the one, one the in left? the middle? King Kong. One in the middle? After, after King, King Kong. Yeah, I see it. I see it. And you can see his, uh, you can tell it. Oh, man, we Tim missed Corrigan. Tim Corrigan. I'll tell you that. Yeah. So lots of neat stuff from Ken Leach. Really cool. Really cool. Glad he sent that. <laughs> That's uh, it. A handkerchief. Okay. That's good. Well, you know, it's any what can I tell you? on your handkerchief. You gotta look. I got allergies and I, I had a problem with my right eye. I've been posting about it on Facebook. Lauren knows about it, but I'm, I, you know, I see floaters. I'm seeing these dark I shapes in my right eye. And yeah. You, yeah, it's something that happens to us older guys. Okay. Uh, if you're not an older guy, I just want to let you know that you have this to look forward to. And I hope you'll enjoy it when your floaters arrive. Uh, so I'll be uh, going to see an eye doctor about that this week. But. I can I can see out of this eye perfectly. So, mm -hmm. yeah. well, like you said, it, you couldn't wear a patch. Might look really cool. It really. might look like Nick Fury, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to. It would be cool or a pirate. I could just a arr, pirate. Arr, you know, I'm a yeah. pirate. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> but uh, it it should be okay. It'll probably go away by itself. But I'm getting it checked out anyway. Anyway, I'm able to see these comics and zines. I did want to mention there was one more thing that I uh, received that I received. I can't find my copy of it right now. It's from Alan Sissom, and it's a new. Uh, I can't find it, but it's the Wild Worlds of Tish, and um, it's a little bit uh, sort of a um, for mature audiences and stuff. So I don't know if we can really show it on, on this uh, show or not. But I did want to thank Alan for sending it, and 
Tish uh, for his uh, his talent, and uh, I know they put a lot into that. And uh, so it's something else you might want to check out. Contact Alan's system if you're interested in that one. So. Okay. Well, that's all we've got for uh, this week's show, but we need more. You know, we need more stuff. We do more shows, more comics. Yeah, so you guys send us, send us your comics. Send us your yeah. comics and zines. You have to send a copy to me and to learn it. I'm sorry, but yeah, you send it to both of us. A little inconvenient to do that, but yeah, uh, we don't have any choice. There's no other way to do this that we know of. Yeah. Uh, well, some of you I might want to send more. Uh, as yeah, I've said somewhat. before, if uh, mm -hmm. if you put a, enclose a little note with your comics to me, I will return them if you ask me to. So, not in the business of collecting free comics. <laughs> I would do that too. I mean, I get free comics I get from the UFO members and stuff too. But yeah. but if you just want to send me a review copy, if you want it returned, let me know and I'll send it back See to that? you. Just, so you so can't go thing. wrong. <laughs> if, if you think you, you know, all oh, these guys are just after comics. No. <laughs> and it's free publicity. It, first, the, the, these videos appear, these small press review videos appear on Larned's, you, uh, Larned's YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And then I give it a few days and then I, I put it on my channel. Yeah. So Steve spreads them around. Places. I've got uh, over a thousand subscribers. Now, that doesn't mean a thousand viewers. That means subscribers. We've been getting 50 to 60 viewers which is not too bad because we haven't been doing it very long. Yeah, and it's a specialized audience. Everybody yeah. that's on YouTube isn't a comic book fan, but yeah. we all are. So, yeah. Okay. So I think that is it for this show. That's it. So we will Hope see you all, as soon as possible. By the way, all the uh, contact info from the artists in this uh, episode will be in the description below the uh, video. So take a look at that. Don't forget to uh, subscribe and hit the notification bell. So when we do have a show up, you'll know it. It'll notify you. Because um, otherwise, yeah. our schedule is not every week. Uh, it would be. Close to every other week, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're close to every other week now. So yeah. if, all you right. want to, if you want to see us more often, you want to see your books reviewed more often, send us more books. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to get simple. enough books where we couldn't do them all in one show. We had to save some right. for the next show. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to leave. We will see you next yep. time.